Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rupa, and I am from Cumulus Networks. And I, this tutorial is about MPLS. And this is Robert, uh, who is also a main contributor to the Linux MPLS uh, kernel code. And yeah, to set the tone for the tutorial, it's going to be a basic how to get started with MPLS um, with on Linux. I am fairly new to MPLS as well. So if you're really looking to move your data center to MPLS or something, I'm not the person you should consult. But uh, Robert here is also a good and is an expert at MPLS. Um, okay. So I do have a few sl slides, the first few slides to get in introducing MPLS, mostly some of MPLS literature I gathered from the web. Um, I'll start with that. So MPLS is a protocol independent transport. Packets are assigned labels and packet forwarding decisions are made on labels um, <coughs> instead of regular IP uh, lookups, IP address lookups. So MPLS operates at layer uh, between data link layer and uh, network layer. It's often called the shim uh, layer 2.5 mainly used in service provider networks, uh, can carry IP, ATM, frame relay traffic. MPLS, um, again from the literature uh, that I've gathered, was, uh, is evolved as a solution to integrate IP over ATM. And its success is mainly primarily because it's, uh, it enables the network to carry all kinds of traffic. Um, again, the same thing. Uh, it's, enables your network to have a unified network infrastructure, mainly for service providers to carry all kinds of uh, customer traffic. Um, a little bit on the terminologies uh, of an MPLS network. Um, the first router or the edge routers are where um, you enter into an MPLS tunnel, ingress and egress. And the routers in between are uh, label switching routers, or they're also called LSRs. So the edge routers are called LER. So the first router usually attaches labels, forwards uh, labels, uh, forwards packets based on label, and the future routers, they basically switch only on the label. Final destination router removes the label and forwards traffic uh, using regular routing. This is a picture of showing the various MPLS routers, LERs at the edges, and in between the routers are called LSRs. This is an example. If you attended the previous VR of talk, uh, I'm sure David had something similar. Um, this, this kind of shows the provider backbone um, MPLS in the provider backbone network, uh, P1 and P2 are the provider edge devices. Again, they are LERs, the edge routers, enter and exit into the MPLS tunnel or MPLS network. This is from an RFC MPLS uh, label entry encoding. I have a tendency to rush through my slides, so if you have any questions, yeah, interrupt. I think the, the important point on that previous slide is it's uh, basically just a four byte end cap. So that's, that's the, yeah. the extra end cap that you pay for, for MPLS compared to some of the IP based end caps. Okay, now we'll um, go into the Linux commands to configure MPLS routes. So this is, the first thing is on the label switching router, that is LSPs, which take in an MPLS packet and uh, uh, swap or pop labels and forward MPLS. So in the kernel, you would, en these are the config options to enable MPLS routing, config MPLS and config MPLS routing. The code, the driver code, the first version was written by Eric Biderman. Um, and that is in net MPLS, AF MPLS .c. So it uses the existing uh, IP routing netlink attributes. If you are aware of that, 
it, they're usually RTA, they start with RTA star. And the new attributes added to that are RTA new test to indicate a label, to carry a label, and RTA VAR to carry a test, an IPv4 or an IPv6 test. Robert, you can interrupt or add anything to what I said. Yeah, so the, the, the RTA via attribute is analogous to the RTA gateway um, attribute, except it, it allows uh, different um, address families. So you will, um, MPLS is not enabled by default in every interface, so if you want to enable it on an interface, there is a proc node, oh, sorry, yeah, it is a proc node, there's a CTL. Um, so this is an example from uh, our boxes which use SWP1 as switch ports, and you echo one in to enable MPLS on that interface. Yeah, and that, that's just because, uh, because of the different sort of um, uh, deployment model of MPLS is that, uh, because you assume that the whole of your MPLS network is, a, is one security domain, as in um, routers trust that the label values that they get from each other are, are, are you know, they're, they're talking to the right person, um, then basically you need to make sure that you don't accept label traffic from what potentially could be untrusted interfaces. So, for example, your, your VPN customers. And the IP route two commands are examples to add MPLS routes. Um, it, the minus F, as you know, it takes V4 and V6 today, and this is a new family, MPLS family, route add label 10. And uh, yeah, the other as two is the destination label stack, 200, 300, and the destination, the next hop. So the IP route to show commands also take a family MPLS to dump the MPLS fib. There is also multipath support for MPLS routes, um, which was recently added in 4.5 uh, kernel. And this follows the same syntax as you would add the IPv4 and IPv6 routes. Next is the edge router. Edge router is the MPLS tunnels. Um, the end routers. So this uses a lightweight tunnel infrastructure. So with MPLS, uh, we were sure that we will not add a separate net device for the tunnel, the MPLS tunnel. So what LWT does is it provides an infrastructure to add, um, assign NCAP attributes to a route uh, instead of creating a tunnel, separate tunnel device. And uh, LWT infrastructure basically generalizes that. Uh, pro you, the NCAP attributes take a family and uh, yeah, you can have any set of attributes. So, so many drivers, many, uh, it provides an infrastructure for red drivers, for lightweight tunnel drivers to register ops. And the, the reason that you need to use lightweight tunnels for MPLS is because you can have thousands, if not hundreds yeah. of thousands, of these, these LSPs, which are essentially tunnels uh, through your network. Yeah, and if you attended the scaling devices talk on, yeah, on Wednesday, the, yeah, MPLS tunnels could create a huge scaling issue. Um, so this, this is a little more details about uh, where to find the LW infrastructure and the route attributes to assign NCAP to a route. So this is also being used by um, VXLAN and Geneve tunnels today. And yeah, so MPLS uh, tunnel driver is nothing but is a lightweight tunnel driver which registers using the lightweight tunnel infrastructure. And you enable it by using by using the config option MPLS IP tunnel. Here's an example of um, attaching your MPLS NCAP attributes to regular routes. And there is a multipath example as well. It follows the exact uh, format as you would add IPv4 or IPv6 routes. 
so the kernel, when it sees such a route and it uh, sees the attributes, NCAP attributes, it creates an LWT state uh, for that route, a tunnel state for that route. And after, uh, during IP lookup, IP route lookup, output lookup, it, um, depending on the family of the NCAP, it redirects you to the tunnel NCAP function. In this case, MPLS. This is an IPv6 example. So there are multiple things going on. Um, there is MPLS stats, which Robert's uh, patches are outstanding. Um, and we, will, we are looking at MPLS L3 VPN. Uh, you must have um, seen David's talk on VRF, and I think he had a use case for L3 MPLS and VRF as well in his demo. And like everything else, we will be at some point offloading this to um, hardware on our boxes, and uh, there will be some switch dev effort around it. Any questions? Um, generally, you don't really set up your own um, uh, label tunnels uh, uh, all over your network. You use something like LDP. Yeah. What's the what's the user base support for that sort of thing? So we we have a prototype with using um, static labels currently uh, via Quagga, uh, but I think you can use BGP as well to distribute labels, and we are looking at it. I'm not sure if the upstream Quagga has any um, yeah support for that yet. But yeah, you can run any LDP or any other protocol in user space. So what it has to do is um, eventually it has to just land the routes into the kernel, the MPLS routes into the kernel. And from there, things flow exactly how it would in the IPv4, IPv6, in terms of hardware offload at least. Um, what about uh, VPLS? Any plans for that? No, not from our side. Uh, uh, yes, I mean L L2, sort of the L2 VPN, the uh, the pseudo wire stuff is uh, is something that uh, that I, I plan to look up uh, look at in due course. Um, uh, VPLS might be a bit more tricky because uh, I think that there's a there is a requirement to do MPLS multicast with that, um, and that's something that uh, I'm not planning to to look at. But uh, certainly the, the, the sort of the L2 VPN pseudo wire stuff is uh, is on on the horizon. Could you elaborate on the hardware offload that you're looking for for MPLS? Is it just an NCAP DCAP offload, or there's more to it? The, and that's all, NCAP DCAP. Uh, uh, LSR and LER are both. OK, thanks. Yeah. So what is the state of integrating MPLS with host functionality, such as checksum offload, segmentation offload, and things like that? I have not thought about it. I've not looked at it, actually. Okay. Yeah. Most of it actually sh should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it should be straightforward. And then I believe it's RFC 7510 is UDP or MPLS over UDP. Given the lightweight tunnel infrastructure, that actually should be pretty trivial, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the nice part about that is it's actually the only UDP encapsulation so far that's an internet standard. So if we get that in, that would actually be kind of cool. OK. Yeah. We will consult you, Tom. <laughs> so how does MPLS integrate with IP, IP Route 2 as well as IP Table, IP Table 2? Uh, not IP Tables, only IP Route 2. Sorry, NF Tables. Sorry. IP Tables and NF Tables. NF Tables? Yeah, so there's no, there's no current support at the moment yeah. for running um, net filter hooks. Um, on, on yeah, basically egress when you're popping the label off and you're going out as IP, that, again, that's something that, uh, that needs to be done and, um, and, and, and should be done. Yeah. In terms of IP, uh, IP route 2 support, it's fully supported, right? I can use the same IP route 2 
command to conf config MPLS. Yes. And I, IP rule has some support, I think, for MPLS, but I'm labels, I'm not sure though. But not in our new driver. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, and um, these are the kernel versions which you should be looking at if you really want to try out. I think the basic LSR support was in 4.1, then we've been, yeah, still the work is ongoing, and there are more things coming, and the latest version, I think, of latest, latest version, version 4.5 is probably the best to actually try out multipath and other things. Oh, yeah, these are just the references. Um, any more questions? I do have a demo. Um, but David, I think you have to shut down one of your simulations because my demo is not working. <laughs> you did? Okay. At the bottom, these are the hosts, customer hosts, and the customer edge devices, CE1, a C2E1, and P1 and PE2 are the LER devices, and P2, P, and PE1 are the MPLS network. So the demo actually tra just shows uh, us pinging from the C1H1 to C1H3 at the top, two customer hosts, and uh, MPLS packets getting switched on the P. P and P2 routers. So this is on PE1 in the picture. Sorry, I'll have to keep shifting between these. Uh, PE1 is the edge router. So here you will see the um, LWT routes for MPLS and also uh, label switching routes. So the first ra MPLS route show shows uh, the MPLS fib in the kernel and the tape, we're using WORF here as well. So IP, this command actually shows the tunnel route. And Can see the MPLS packets on PE one.
that's about it. <coughs> Any questions? Or? Thank you, everyone. Thank you.